430 we are doing episode 25 um amazing that we've made it to this number um this is like the the quarter mark so the big celebration is on, on 100 fellas but uh we're there we're at the quarter mark and uh, we're doing good we're lucky tonight because we're blessed to be in the presence once again of mr maddie wilson all the way from nouveau brunswick um, he's on, he's going to class up the place tonight and add a little bit more, uh, East coast flair to the show. Going to have some laughs. Um, just so everybody knows audio seems to be an issue. The hamsters that, that run the internet machine around here is, uh, they're on vacation. So, uh, you may have some poor audio, poor vid video, and, uh, we apologize for this as usual. We've got Phil in the dirty schwa we've got merck just outside of the nation's capital ryan down in nova scotia dave up in kincardin and i'm in kingston and as i've mentioned we've got maddie wilson down in new brunswick and just it is awesome to see you again maddie thanks for coming back on means a lot to us buddy i don't he hasn't moved in a while he's frozen oh, maddie gone that was quick. Yeah, he'll be back. Awesome. Nah, he'll what be back. Look at that, Phil. Huh? How do you feel about that? That's unfortunate. Mm. <laughs> so I got. I do have to say this while we're waiting for Maddie to come back on. That we done that episode last week, um, where it was just the five of us on, and we we had a good time. Um, and I learned something that people actually learn stuff by watching us on this show or listening to us so and the big winner was phil and people are messaging me saying that you know what phil spoke some really really good points last week and uh a few words that shouldn't have been said i what words were those yeah you said a few back to that week's episode <laughs> um yeah, no, Phil, a lot of good feedback. And, and for the most part, people just never really, uh, never really clued in that it was a bad thing to be doing. And not that they were being um, immature or they were being disrespectful. They just really never put much thought in, into it was what they said. So, Well, here's, here's something for you. So remember um, that guy that messaged, uh, that guy that was talking to you about yeah, that guy Phil, he's drinking, smoking, swearing, yeah, yeah. and this. He messaged me like the day of Easter. Or he either messaged me the day that you posted that episode or the day after. Mm -hmm. For EPM, and he's like, dude, like I thought I was like the only one that despised all these silly photos and this and that. He's like, you were spot on. Like, good job, love the episode. Like, just ranting and raving. I've actually gotten. A yeah. few PM from our uh, our fellow listeners and and yeah, it turned out to be a good episode, even though half of it was at my expense. But <laughs> so, so so Maddie, let's bring that up. Let's bring that up for those that missed last week's episode. The reason why we have the like adult rated version, I guess Dave and Damien can explain this better. Restricted. Well, we're restricted. We're restricted on YouTube. Yes. I have a bit of a potty mouth, but at least I speak from the heart. So for those that missed last week's episode, if you revert back to, and watch it, during the course of the start of the video, I'm watching, <laughs> and I'm watching like Ryan 
and Damien throwing up like makeshift white guy gang signs. And then I'm watching Mark waving a Sharpie. I'm like, <laughs> what's the clown doing, right? Whatever, these guys, a bunch of stooges, whatever. <laughs> so for those that missed it, to the end of the episode, it, it was released that there was a secret bet on how many times I would swear and drop the F-bomb. What's the F-bomb? Could you have to revert back to last episode? So this, so this, uh, this will actually be a first out of all the episodes we've aired. I am not going <laughs> to word this week. Promise. Scout, Scout's honor, wherever it goes. I don't know, however it goes. Maddie, yeah. Uh, but going back to that last episode, I really wish more people would listen to that spiel you had about photography. I mean, two days after the episode releases, there's a guy posting a picture holding a, a wood duck as his personal phallic symbol. Like, Jesus Christ. Uh, Maddie, so uh, just so that you're following, a bit, because I know you listen to every episode that we do, but you may have missed last week's. Um, I listened to that one, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna break down. So, uh, so, anyways, uh, Phil came on last week and and sort of sort of put it out there that he he's a little bit disgusted with with the pictures that he's seeing some people put up of the birds that they're shooting, right? The head's blowing off and and beaks oh, yeah. shut, right? And and he sort of yeah. kind of went on a little bit of a rant over it. Uh, and it's been pretty been pretty positive uh, for the amount of people that says, you know what, we agree with you 100%. And then there were some people that just didn't really put any thought into it. They weren't being disrespectful. They just didn't put any thought to it. And now they're saying, well, I'll never do that now. And Phil's a genius, which is mind-boggling on so many levels but well, yeah. you know well it feels mine <laughs> so just just to get you read in on what we're talking about here yeah absolutely right on i don't disagree with that at all I, that's something that bothers me a lot too you know people people shoot a nice bird or shoot a whole bunch of birds or whatever and it just might just well throw them in a pile on the ground and take a picture you know there's no real pride and how they set them up or anything. Yeah, and, and I think that, and Dave, David sort of kind of touched on on how, you know, when he or his son shoots a bird, how he holds it up and tries to show off the colors as much as he can and, and stuff like that, you know, and, and, and Mark and Ryan have all talked about how, you know, they try to stage the photo to the point where it gives it shows off just how beautiful that bird is, especially now this time of year, because they're starting to come in full plume, right? And their colors are just amazing. I'm starting to see some wicked, wicked pictures of wood ducks right now. Um, so yeah, so Phil, never thought that when we came up with this idea of doing this podcast, that it would be somewhat educational. But here we are. Well, especially for front again like the, the thing with the pictures is you always got to think like as many people as you have on your facebook or your instagram like there's plenty of people on there that don't hunt yeah and if all you ever pictures of piles of birds even if they're set up nice and you don't show like hey look at this nice mallard look at the speculum on it like mm -hmm. nobody can relate with your why kind of thing so when you that's post right. a picture like that hey that's kind of a just even a picture we're, we're not ashamed of our game we're just on another side of it so yeah no good point yeah so I think that's a great point i mean we talked about that last week too like um as waterfowls we're a pretty small community it already is so we're in the business of recruitment yeah we need we need more more hunters and more hunters is only going to help if, if we're in the trend the downward trend it's not going to help our situation and people who are misrepresenting the sport or disrespecting the game like that that's that's not going to help attract more people to this i had an aunt yeah. say to me uh she said you got quite the blood bloodlust and this was a few years ago when there was a lot more pictures of piles of birds going up on my uh on my feed in my Facebook or whatever. And she said to me after, she said, you have quite the bloodlust. And I said, what are you, what are you talking about? And she's like, well, you just, 
you said there's something different about you. You, you you're always putting up these pictures of piles of animals, and I was like, yeah, but it's not about blood loss. It's about putting meat in my freezer, mm-hmm. you know, that mm-hmm. kind of thing. But she didn't understand because all she seen was these pictures of yeah. piles yeah. of birds every two or three days the for fun. like three years. <laughs> yeah. right? And as you're saying yeah. this, yeah. people are watching the video and they see your shit that says, I love seals with gravy. Roasted. Fucking right. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. I love it. Not a lie. No, yeah. absolutely. For sure. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a big deal for me, too. I mean, you have to, uh, you don't need to be ashamed of your game by any means, and you should showcase it, but there's more to the just piles and the same picture, basically, yeah. of dead birds. It, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't. I rarely post a, a pile picture. It'll always be some other point of the hunt so that people can at least see, hey, that looks like fun. You know, it's not just yeah. a pile of dead birds. There's you know more what? to That's it. People can see I saw, again. I saw your Instagram story there the other day, and I immediately wanted to have a giant feed of bacon and sausage. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no but that's a good point maddie because you know what i i do throw i don't i don't put up any pictures that are disrespectful to the animal like i won't put up any yeah. grotesque pictures but i will put up pictures like of a pile of birds or, or something like that and you know what you brought up a good point because one thing like i i love shooting birds and i love eating eating them too but i also enjoy the work that goes in the that that's involved in getting the birds. So, you know, the the slugging the decoys and even though it's probably not as much fun at the moment, but when you when you think back of of, of some of your best hunts, they're usually your hardest, the ones when you were miserable and, and the whole bit. And just showing a pile of birds probably don't tell the whole story uh, of of that hunt, right? So so, so you know what? Maybe, maybe that's something that I can do as well. Is is not necessarily just show a picture of a pile of birds, but actually show a picture of of another part of the hunt that you know tells the story and and maybe, as Merck alluded to, get or uh, Ryan alluded to, get recruitment up more and show how much fun the actual hunt is. It's not always just about piles of birds. Uh, uh, yeah i mean we have like i have my can i don't have a big fancy camera it's just a canon rebel t2i and i've got a 250 millimeter lens on it like it's nothing super fancy but it's always right beside my blind bag ready to go and i try to take as many pictures as i can throughout the hunt and if i go out to run the dog i just pass it down the line it's on full auto play point and shoot take as many pictures as you want you know Awesome. And it just gives you something different to post. I mean, you know, it used to be that guys like Jeff Coates, as you guys well know, you've had him on mm-hmm. the show, outstanding guy. I mean, you know, Jeff Coates has been taking pictures for years. And for the longest time, there was only, it seemed like a few guys that were taking quality pictures, you know, of waterfowl and just mm-hmm. different things. Now everybody's got a camera and everybody's, a photographer which which is which is great but uh if you're looking to kind of think outside the box and post different pictures now it's almost harder because so many people have cameras but that being said i you know we should challenge each other to to post more than just a pile picture like show more of the hunt nothing wrong with posting pictures of dead birds at all you know as long as they're, they're nice pictures like it does mm-hmm. the game justice like you were saying um but we should be showing more of the hunt so that more people can relate and i mean you can see it you you can see it in in just how many people engage with your photos or your videos or whatever you know if it's something other than like a grotesque picture or anything like that if it's a nice picture of like you and your kids or just your dog or anything that's different even if there is dead birds and people aren't hunters which I, you know all of us have lots of those yeah they can still relate and say oh you know what like 
I wouldn't go out and do that, but that's a nice picture. It looks like they're having a good time. Mm -hmm. you know? Dave, uh, actually, I would say if you went and looked at the analytics on our Instagram, I would say the pictures uh, that you put up of uh, Kobe with those first couple ducks that he've shot, I would say those are the ones that have probably got the most likes out of, uh, out of all of our pictures so far this season. I, I would hazard to say, and that's just, you know, a, a 15 year old boy with his first duck, you know what I mean? And, and a smile. So uh, yeah, there's some truth to what you're speaking, Maddie. Oh, for sure. Like I posted a picture, my son and I, Rowan and I went out in the early goose season and, uh, he took his gun. I didn't shoot. We were only going to shoot just a few birds. Um, I trained dogs on this guy's ground a lot. And he, he was somewhat worried about the neighbors. He didn't want to upset the neighbors. He's like, so if you go, you know, just maybe a couple of you and, and do your thing and, you know, don't be there all day kind of thing. So I said, okay, well, we'll just go me and you Rowan and you can shoot. And Rowan is a pretty good crack shot. Anyway, he shot, uh, eight geese with nine shots did all the you know I just kind of sat back and watched him do his thing and he's Rowan's 13 and uh, I took a nice picture of him after with the dog and like so many people sent me messages about that and you know it just took me I'm not a photographer like I, I know what uh, you know how to frame a picture but that's about it and to put it on there and so many people even though it was him with his birds laying out in front mm -hmm. of him. God is limited birds and, and people just, they all look good, right? They, you know, laid out there and people just absolutely loved that picture because it was him, just a young boy. Mm -hmm. doing his, tell he had a good time with his dog, so yeah. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Hey, Manny, yeah. uh, we, done, we done a pretty good, uh, we done a pretty good segment on last week's show and it's awesome that you're on here now because I'd love to, uh, I, I'm sure, fuck, I'm gonna, I'm really gonna put you to the fire on this one. So waterfowl bands. So we we've 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 had this conversation a couple times on the show because it it comes up and it, it's such a polarizing topic because for me, and I had mentioned it on the show last week, is that it was always quite simple for me, was that um, if you shot the bird, you got you got the band. If there was any dispute on who shot the bird well then you'd flip a coin or you'd draw straws and, and or whatever right you'd figure it away but now i'm hearing all these stories about whatever there's all kinds of these new rules but now i've heard something else fellas and you may not have heard this but i've heard it i've heard that people buy bands off ebay mm. and they put them on their lanyards or the bands from the DU and Delta dinners, those show up on band under lanyards. Stop <laughs> it. Stop it right now. <laughs> kidding me. You are boys. Me. It's all about legitness. Legitness. So, so Maddie, now, I'm going to ask you. If you're in the group. Oh. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. wait. Yeah. We Phil, it. Phil, if you're out in a group setting, and someone shoots a band and it's the first band that your dog got, are you going to get it? Or if it's a special day like that, are you going to, what do you think? Asking, for, asking for a friend. Yeah. Someone not for me. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck no. Yeah. Fuck That's that. a her. Fuck no. Fucking yeah. Bullshit. <laughs> No, but no so Matt, fucks given here, boys. <laughs> no, but Maddie, seriously though, like, like I'm sure you see it too. Like you, you're down, you're hunting all year, all fall long, and and the whole bit, right? Oh, Phil, Phil's got his hand up. Oh. If I'm on a solo shoot, yeah, and I shoot a band, yeah, do I get to keep it? No, it comes to me because I shot it. Asking for a friend. <laughs> Depends if your dog retrieved it or not. <laughs> yeah. 
it just, it's something that comes up and I, I see it. And, and I had asked the question, Maddie, and, and I'd, I'd like to know what your thoughts are because Ryan, Ryan chimed in on it and gave a pretty good response. But um, when you look at a, at a hunter and, or a, a waterfowler and you see, you know, the lanyard full of bands and then there's a fellow with no bands, do you look at the fella that's with all the bands as that that fella must be an amazing hunter because he's got all these bands on his lanyard is that is that something that comes is that something that crosses your mind or 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 is it something else i think that i think that that's the way that you're supposed to feel about somebody that has a whole <laughs> yeah uh, but uh, realistically realistically uh no because i i certainly know some people that have a, a shitload of bands but it's only because they are on you or ended right across the road kind of thing so that doesn't product their, of their geography yeah their level of legitness is certainly not measured by the amount of steel they have around their lanyard but uh, no not really uh not at this point in my career i guess i mean again like i say i've seen enough people that would go to a, a place where they know that a bunch of birds got band hammer them and like put 14 bands on their lanyard and be like rock star mm -hmm. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> now I'm don't get me wrong that. like i i i'm the first fella that'll click my heels if i actually shoot one and i get to put it oh, on my land no i want them yeah, yeah i i like i'm yeah, absolutely. But I absolutely refuse to get into an argument over it. They, they are the biggest misconception of legitimacy as a waterfowler. Yeah. Unless, your name, unless your, your name is Field Hudnall or Fred Zink and you've got and you've got a chain on you like Mr. T, like I don't care. Like you gotta you gotta prove yourself. Like don't that doesn't impress me. Like but Damien, what? Well, Damien, if you can't call, what kind of lanyard do you have to put your bands on? <laughs> well, I've got a call. I've got calls on a lanyard. I can't really call. Actually, I don't even take my calls out most time because there's always somebody with me that can call better than what I can. So uh, I don't know. How do you show off then? How do I show off? I don't fucking show off. Oh, I think you should. You got more duck lanyard, duck uh, bands than I got. You got like, how many did you get this year, too? No, I've only got one this year. I always make it a point to take my lanyard off if we're doing a photo at the end of the hunt. Yeah, no, lanyard oh, really? Lanyard. No. Yeah, no. I do. Why is that? It comes off. I don't know. I just, I just don't want to be judged by that, whether you have, no matter how many bands I have. And I'm on second lanyard, so... Hmm. I haven't shot a lot of bands, but so I didn't. I didn't know you consciously done that. Yeah, I just don't do it. Hmm. Put one away. It's yeah. not a cool. Huh? Phil, you look like you got something to say. Yeah, Phil, what's yeah. on your mind? It rhymes with truck. I'm sure. <laughs> He's never gonna <laughs> slip it up, and we Poor keep doc. <laughs> did we did we talk about? Like, I don't know if we're recording. Did we talk about what's online here? Like, what's at stake for... We, we don't know because he hasn't told us what's at stake if he screws up. Well, we know that Matt's, Matt's getting the hat. That's, that's one one thing. Well, right. if Matt makes him drop if an F-bomb. Yeah. I, yeah. I think you should get one regardless, but... <laughs> <laughs> Two times, two times on the show, we got to get a hat. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. You're at the half waypoint. And I'm sailing. You're very deliberate. <laughs> <laughs> Maddie, tell us a funny story about Tank, man. We've been too serious. We've been on here now for about 27 minutes, and we've been too serious. Tell us a good story about Tank, buddy. Oh, man. There's so many, but I've got a good, fresh one here. When you, when you sent me that message, uh, I was out scouting the night, and I thought, oh, man, that's going to be so good. So... So uh, I'm in what well, week four of guiding. I've got uh, we've got one more group left, and then we're done. Uh, next 
last was it last week last week uh shooting time is at seven it's literally 6 38 my truck and trailer and i mean i've got a big truck like it's a 2500 crew cab long box with a 16 foot trailer behind it big white trailer behind it sitting in the decoys so i'm like okay boys get your stuff out um and i'll go park the truck so I had got to the field quite early because it's first come first serve with permission here. And I had the dogs in the truck with me, not in the dog box. And I go walk over to the truck, go to get in, pull the handle. Doesn't open. I'm like, huh, that's weird. And, I, and like for, for, I know four or five seconds, I just stood there like this. <laughs> With my mouth hanging up, probably even a little jewel coming inside of my mouth. And I was like, I looked over to the other side and it was locked too. And I was like, how the fuck did that happen? The doors are locked. And then I looked in there and there's Tank sitting there with his eyes crossed looking at me. <laughs> like, hey, I locked, I locked your doors for you, Dad. I'm just going to sit here in the middle of the seat. Yeah, nice and warm. <laughs> yeah, nice and warm. <laughs> couldn't be, couldn't honestly be any farther away from home. Like uh, the farthest east we hunt here, like damn near to the middle of the province. Like no way this truck is getting out of the decoys in time for these geese to come. So I'm like, what am I going to do? How am I going to get in this truck? Thank God I had a trailer. So I was like, Okay, I got my shit together. I went in the trailer. I had a hatchet. I got one of the guys to grab that, and he kind of stuck it in the door and pried the door open. I had my silhouettes with me. They had wire stakes, thank God, as well. So I got one of those out of the back of it, straightened it out. Buddy jams the door open a little bit more. Jamie did, and then, bump, right down in and opened the door. Like 20, 30 seconds. It was like, I should be like, stealing cars. For never did that before. Yeah, like you've yeah, done it a million tank, times, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. Tank, tank jumps up in the front seat and like is looking at me, and I'm like, <laughs> "You just put yourself on the back of this truck. <laughs> You're smart enough. Yeah, you get out and get back where you belong back there, Mister. <laughs> hey, Matty, I want to talk to you. I want to ask you a question. So Mark and I were out, uh, Mark and I were out hunting on Saturday and I still got, so my, my pop is, uh, she's probably about 17 months old now, 18 months old. Um, crazy amount of drive, uh, the whole bit. Uh, so we knocked down a bird and, and I guess it's really my fault because I haven't trained her or I haven't spent a whole lot of time with her retrieving, having to go through decoys. And, mm -hmm. and I sent her, and now she, she never seen the bird fall. So she, it's a blind retrieve for her, right? Now she's done blind retrieves and she's, she's good. But this day she went out and the only, like, she would not listen. It was, she brought back decoys. I bet you she brought back, I sent her five times and five times she came back with a decoy in her mouth. Is that... The, uh, and I, I don't want to sound like it's such a ridiculous question, but training your dog, is that something that every dog trainer does? Sending their dog through decoys? Oh, yeah. Big yeah. time. Like, I find with, with Tank, like, over the three days when guys are here, like, I run, I have four dogs to run. Mm -hmm. And so two of them are eight years old, Riley is six, and then Tank is one. And I said, you'll be able to see the difference between all these dogs and how they just, you can line them up and run them through little lanes between the decoys and they just, they, they can just see it. They can move their heads just little amounts. Whereas a dog yeah. like Tank, pull him a little bit, he turns his head like that far, Yeah, you know? So yeah, like I run decoys every day and as I get closer to fall, I'll run a lot more. And there'll be some days when I'll run five or six dozen 
decoys and just really? run shorter retrieves like yeah. out past decoys. Yep. Yeah. And and a lot of times uh, on the stuff, I'll run it on short grass with white bumpers. Yeah. So that they can see it go through the air, see it hit the ground and bounce, and then send them through, and, and they can darn near see it see it the whole way. Um, but yeah, especially in in water, uh, you know, you don't have to have a lot of decoys to start mm-hmm. with, but you can always add more in certain situations where they'll swim through because they need to understand that they got to swim through them. That sometimes they're going to get caught in them and not to panic and yeah. yeah. So it wouldn't be a big deal. I mean, it, there's 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 plenty of on the job training with a hunting dog for sure. I've been uh, so since Saturday now I've I've had I got decoys uh, uh, out on on the lawn and everything and I'll just have her at the heel and and walk through like a serpentine and just walk through all of those decoys um, do that a couple times comes back inside the house do a little bit of work and then I'll go out and I'll do four or five blinds with with dead birds I'll put dead birds out and then I'll go get her and bring her and if she remo- if she seems to slow down and to just look at a decoy i just i'm like back i just yell no back and and it seems to be kind of working she doesn't seem to be paying much attention to the to the decoys it seems as though she's starting to think well if he's sending me then it got to be a dead bird like there has to be a, a a bird and not not one of these plastic things and it seems yeah. like she's getting up. Yeah, so you could just uh, crawl, walk, run with all of that stuff, kind of treat that as it is. Ob- obviously, uh, we don't think of that as being a milestone for most dogs or for dogs in general. And a lot of dogs, maybe it wouldn't be. They have no trouble running through decoys. But obviously, with yours, there's yeah. you know, some amount of confusion there. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you start it with a small amount, even just floaters or shells, things that she can see over and really even jump yeah. over. Yeah. And then you could silhouette geese or full body geese, things that are going to move a little bit. You know, it, it's amazing to see a dog that's so super talented be uh, possibly yeah. thrown off or upset by running by a decoy and it mo- hitting it and it moving. And geez, what was that? Like, yeah, you know, like, like, and, and, and it's not because I'm bragging because it like, it's, this dog I got is an amazing dog, super intelligent, crazy amount of drive. But that Saturday, and Mark was there, um, she did not want to listen to me. What's, like it was, hey, these things are floating in the water. This must be what he wants. And, right. and just like she, it was like she was acting as if I know what he wants. I don't even need to listen to what he's saying because I already know what he wants, which wasn't what I wanted. But anyways yeah yeah so so i would just reel back and don't you know don't worry about doing that uh, mm-hmm. the worst thing you could do is to just continue on and make it even worse right you know yeah you, you obviously identify a problem when you're out hunting uh with a young dog like tank i knew this being his second year still there was going to be a lot that he would he would need to learn like at the start of the season you couldn't get him to check down every time i sent him he was running for the end of the field right by right through the decoys he could go right fuck if it was 400 yards that's where he was going right to the back end and uh now i've got him checked down a little bit um but it's a balance right like sometimes i don't need him to check down sometimes i want him to run far so uh things like that i just work with him i walk him to the edge the outside edge of the decoys so he Mm -hmm. understands hey we're through the decoys there's nothing right here i've got to run long and then <clears throat> when he comes back i make him run all the way back through the decoys so yeah i mean there's a lot of things like that those things wouldn't upset me i mean it's just a dog a young dog that's learning right mm-hmm. yeah ryan a lot- uh, how's how's scout doing ryan uh she's good i don't know i was talking to you guys a couple weeks ago like trying to build up her prey drive and it's coming a lot a lot better now so she's got tons of gas um she's catching on pretty quick so it's just a matter of like and every it's it's crazy how every pup is different like they're mm-hmm. all they have yeah. personality, so but uh compared to my last dog like it, in the house like she was uh my last lab casey she was 
so easy going in the house, super easy, low maintenance pup. This one is like, she wants to pick up shoes all the time. My four-year-old's pretty hyper. If he goes running by, she pretty much thinks, oh, there's a crippled goose and she's on him. Like, <laughs> you know, like, so she's tons of gas. So we're just trying to manage that in the house. But outside during training sessions, and everything, it's, it's, she's pretty good. So pretty, uh, pretty happy with it so far. But uh, every dog always presents a different, unique kind of hurdle. It kind of makes you kind of think, well, how am I going to tackle this problem or get over this deficiency? So. You just kind of live and learn with everyone. It's only really my second real dog I've trained, self-trained. So, um, but uh, it's every time you make progression, it's uh, it just makes you want to. It's like it's like hitting that perfect swing in golf. You know, you might shoot you might shoot 105, but you you hit that one. You just strike that one pure shot, and that's what keeps coming back. It's the same thing with dog training. If you have that one little breakthrough moment, it just keeps you coming back and wanting to just keep progressing and work with the dog. So. It, it's fun. Like I, I love it. I, I just can't wait to see what, uh, where we're at in a year from now. So I, uh, you know, Dave is, Dave is working on, on, on getting into a new dog here. Now he's got, he's got Nala and, and now, but I'm not quite sure what Phil has done, but Phil has somehow infiltrated Dave's brain and has talked them into getting a brown dog. And I do not, I just, how did you do it? Oh, I thought you had a duck toller. She ain't yellow. She ain't yellow. <laughs> uh. the, the wife said to me last night, I said, yeah, you wait until you meet Phil's dogs, you'll fall in love and you'll want one of those dogs. And then she's like, you know, we should look into these Portuguese water dogs. Jeez. Jesus Christ. So it ain't happening. You're going to get somebody. Somebody. Anyway, tomorrow I'm going to show up with a fucking Portuguese water dog. You <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's a, that's a good point. Uh, Dave, why don't you, uh, why don't you talk about what your, uh, what your plans are this weekend? Are you bringing Nala with you? No, I'm going to leave her home. I'm going to leave her to protect the wife and kids. Oh you know? Yeah. No, it's, uh, I don't have a kennel for the back of the truck yet. So I'm not going to drive her all the way to Kingston or Belleville or Brockville, whatever the fuck, wherever I'm going. Yeah. But, uh, Are you leaving your bubble? He is leaving his bubble. I ain't got no bubble. Right. You have a self-imposed bubble. Yeah. yeah. He had that it's, before uh, COVID. Yeah. <laughs> He's a germaphobe. It's the, yeah. It's the steel shot steel shot weekend with Peter Heathfield and Lance Holmes and uh, yeah, Brandon so Beerman. That's Those this guys. weekend. Brandon Matt, Beerman. Hey Matt, do you got any contingency plans if the border's not open this spring for training dogs? Like what's I know you usually go down to the States and run dogs down there, but what's the what's the deal? Anything yet or it's uh bad shape that way i think uh my buddy that i uh train with quite a bit from pei i think this winter where they're not going to be able to go to alabama i think he's going to go to bc a lot of canadians are wow but isn't uh, doesn't that count as a business what you're doing yeah and as a business aren't you allowed to cross the border for commerce no not now they just changed it oh, they, they just yeah. shut it down right um, I don't know if I don't think I'd go anyway, really. So, no. so, um, and and the reason why I know this is because it, it it's come up in some conversations with me. So, so there has been up until about a week, week and a half ago, there has been the possibility that if you are doing business, um, cross border business, and and as long as you're registered and you've got the paperwork to to prove that you're doing business, you can cross back and forth, but that, that has since changed. And, uh, and now you're not, uh, one of my good buddies trains dogs in South Carolina and that's where Lander went last spring. Um, you know, and, and he's not able to get down to South Carolina. He, he does South Carolina and then heads to Alabama for a couple of weeks. Uh, 
and he's not able to go down this year either. So, yeah, it, it's in fact a lot of people. I think of the outfitters. What are those guys? A lot of those people here in Canada, Jeepers. I don't know what they're going to do because I I highly doubt it'll be open in the springtime. Oh, I don't think it will be. No, I I well, be shocked. You know what? I think that uh, this election could have a big uh, outcome on it. Because if I'm the not American, that, the American election, the American, yeah. Because if you see, like, say Biden gets in and then he just shuts shuts the United States down for for three weeks and things get under control, I'm I'm not saying that's yeah. going to happen, but we don't know, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. and I, I I mean, your post I came out the other day about. Yeah, go ahead. No, no, no. Go for it. Like your post the other day about the like we have a lot to worry about here in Canada with our politics and stuff, but. Man, those U.S. politics going on right now, they're going to affect us in the hunting community big coming up. Wait. Yeah, um, but I don't think there's a whole lot of flavor in Canada to open up the border yet, right? Which is which is opposite of, of what the current administrative uh, administration is down the States. Like Trump wants it open. Um, Twinkle Toes here in Canada doesn't want it open. Um I, I don't know what Biden's view is on, on the border, um, but yeah, you, you're 100% right. If, if, if things get sorted out in the States here right quick, it could open up super fast. I, I highly doubt it, especially since Canada, it seems like we're getting, uh, we're starting to spike a little bit more. And now there's been a, a ton of, uh, a ton of evidence saying that uh, sports is what's uh, causing this spike right now. It's all the, the team sports and people traveling around doing these, you know, hockey, baseball, um, this whole bit. So, uh, yeah, man, I, I don't know. I don't know if this border thing's going to happen anytime soon, but I'm at, I've got one drink of bird dog whiskey left and uh, I got to get down across the border to pick up some more. So, I don't know. It's not looking good, boys. I, I no. might have. A bunch. I certainly wouldn't want to be a. Uh, you know, I I just think about all those guys across Canada, especially like the the big game outfitters and stuff. Man, yeah. Like, you know, they they maybe would have their deposits to keep them rolling, but all the spring, all the spring hunts, like spring bear and stuff. Yeah. Well, Ryan, deal for you, you look at Ryan. We wouldn't even have Ryan on this show right now if this was a normal season, because Ryan would be out west quite. Uh, uh, Guiding with the uh, Clodio, you know. It, yeah, well, I've got other show. It, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah a bit of guys. a fucking superstar here. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Two YouTube episodes. Yeah, <laughs> want to. <laughs> I haven't got a paycheck for that yet, by the way, Claude. <laughs> um, Royalties. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Actually, his defense, he hasn't put it on YouTube yet either. <laughs> um, but. Uh, yeah, like a lot of a lot of guys are doing like Canadian prices right now, and, and Claudio's yeah. like, I haven't I haven't had a year off in 26 years, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna pop smoke and go elk hunting and do stuff he hasn't got to do, so he can afford to do it. That's fine, but but uh, some guys are. I, I'm curious to see what's gonna happen. Like we we may not be out of this come next fall either, right? Like we we really don't know what's gonna happen. Um, it could really ruin a lot of guys' business businesses in, in that aspect. So um, it's, it's it is good that some guys are just running Canadian rates and for and it's good that guys are actually signing up and and uh, you know keeping those help and keeping those businesses afloat. It kind yeah. of pissed me off that guys are bitching about prices, but I'm like, you know, is what it is. But uh, yeah, so but it's gonna be interesting come next year. So I, I know Matt, you you get guide out west too. So I don't know if your uh, your operator shut down or not, but they di they did, but I didn't go. I, I mean, the, the flights were crazy trying to get you to stop, and you'd have to hold over in Toronto and stay the night. And I was like, you know what? Like by the time I get home, if if by chance they made me quarantine, that would screw my whole fall. So I just said, I don't think yeah. so, boys. Yeah, yeah. Where I'm at. Well, it, I think it'll, it'll definitely show, uh, and I don't mean this with any disrespect whatsoever to the outfitters out West, but I think it will show who, who was 
prepared for the long haul. And, and so even these fellas that are doing the Canadian prices and stuff like that, um, it'll show who's actually prepared and, and have the, the operation to be able to, to, to do the Canadian prices and, and not have to close up shop next year. Do you know what I mean? Like I, I like who, who's actually, um, managing their, their business properly that they're able to get through this, this COVID or, you know, are they, are they offering these Canadian prices just in order to keep the lights on or are they offering the Canadian prices just because, listen, we want to get out and we want to hunt. Um, and they know that Canadians won't pay the prices that Americans do. So, you know, in order to get out and hunting and, and get their guides doing something, well, they'll drop the price, right? It, it remains to be seen exactly um, which side of that of that pendulum uh, the guides are at west, you know. Bill, did you have uh, many people from the States coming up for you? What? Phil's froze. We have no audio. No audio. Yeah, can't swear if can't hear him. <laughs> Watch him. Can't, can't hear you. He, he said, "Fuck no." Yeah, he I just heard him. I just <laughs> seen. I just read his lips. Free hat for Maddie. <laughs> Free guided hunt. There you go, Maddie. <laughs> yeah. I said, I read his lips. I seen it. Mark wins. Yeah, well done. We did it. There's going to be a computer flying across that garage here any second. Yeah. He's going to be divorced and IT less here very quickly. <laughs> Working, Phil? Yeah. Yeah. There we gotcha. Go. I just can't see my screen. Well, that's okay. That's still in the proof. We can see you. That's we fine. See you. Just you, buddy. That's all that matters. Yeah. Stop drinking the moonshine. Shit will make you go blind. Yeah. All wise tale. They say that about. Here you go. Matt, do you guys get a new put new push of birds there yet, or? We need one. Yeah, us here too, man. A lot of birds around right now, and we've got. I'll tell you what I'm dealing with, honestly, right now, is a lot of guys. Like I'll get permission on a field. I've had this has happened to me three times in the past two weeks. It actually happened tonight. Uh, it happened uh, two days ago, and. Yeah, once last week. Um, I had permission on fields, and guys are just rolling in and shooting them, not asking. Like, it, it's crazy. It's crazy. Really frustrating. Driving in fields, like, I've never seen so many hunters around here. But that being said, I've never seen as many birds as we have. But we're ready for something else. Like, these ones got to go. For sure. Yeah, they're um, getting stable. We had a couple days uh, last week where we got into one day for sure. We got into the snows, and uh, we had some pretty strong north winds, and it was cold. Like we thought it was even going to snow, and I said, "Geez, we're we're probably going to get some snow on the ground." And we got a lot of new birds, like thousands, and uh, it's been stale. Really, since then, I don't feel like I've seen any migrators coming through. And I mean, we're on the road. I'm putting on like hundreds of kilometers a day driving. So, like, we know when there's 200 birds in a roost, and then all of a sudden there's 2,000, like, some, something happened. And a lot of times you see them coming in too. So, in certain areas, but we need them. Absolutely. We haven't seen much new coming through. So, yeah. Just going back to your, your point about guys like just, rolling in and and you know shooting birds without permission that that does two things one it's it's just the ultimate dick move and two you're just gonna yeah. ruin permission for everybody like yeah you know nobody's gonna get permission with that farmer now potentially well we had uh of course just about everywhere um this year it was like a drought and uh last week we got five inches of rain so everything we've been without question walking it in and uh, uh like this guy tonight 
when I called about this field, the farmer was like, yep, no problem, Matt, go ahead. Um, <clears throat> just let me know when you're going to go. I said, well, I'd like to go tomorrow morning. He said, great. He said, just make sure, I'm sure you know, but just make sure you, you walk in. Like you can drive in a bit on the edge, but, you know, stay to the high ground and walk your stuff in. I said, no problem. And this guy tonight was parked right in the middle of it, sitting on the tailgate, drinking <laughs> beer at the end of it. And I'm like, mm. shit, like, you know? Yeah. Yeah, like here, here we are trying to do it right. I've never seen this follow before. I don't know who was, but yeah. Anyway, it's rough. It, it, it's a pain for sure. It's frustrating. Guys, just I mean, it's not posted, so doing anything illegal now, but it's the ethics of, you know, you're going to be in a field. If you ask those guys, they would say, "Hey, this person already talked to me. Move along." But anyway. My favorite's when you're set up in the field and you're just finishing, you're about to drive your truck and trailer back to get out of the way. And all of a sudden someone rolls in with their truck and, Hey, you mind if we hunt with you? Like, what the fuck? Phil, what do you think yeah. of that? Yeah, I'm mute, buddy. I can't even hear you. That's, That's just ignorant. Ignorant, yeah. <laughs> You know this. You know this bet is carrying on past this show, Phil. Not just tonight, buds. No, we need the old Phil back. I miss him. I say recording is done. I say we cut this bet off and let Phil go nuts for the last five minutes. I've already said the F word. We're back to restricted mode anyway. Just a you didn't count. What? No. So you didn't count. No. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, it, you know what? Uh, it, it, I think it, it's a sign of the times and not to get too philosophical here right now, but this whole fellas just rolling up onto a piece of property, doing what they want to do. Um, no respect. Um, and, and it, it's got nothing to do with it, it, it all comes down to the fact that there's no repercussions anymore, right? right. Like no one's, no one's getting, I, I don't know, like, and, and no yeah, yeah, like no one's getting their fucking teeth punched in. No one, you can't say nothing to anybody anymore. And, and if you do, it's all done online. It's all done on a computer screen. No one would look at somebody and go, you're a douchebag to their face because you're afraid you're going to get you get pucked in the lips. Um, you, you know what I mean? Like there's no repercussions anymore. So therefore people can go and do and say, and, and everybody's, everybody's special because, because their mothers told them when they were four and five years old, that they're fucking special. Don't you say nothing about my mother. Yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? And, and, and this is why we are, this is why we're in the situation that we're in right now. And like, like shit, man, I, I've been hunting and, and had steel almost landing on me. And I'm like, what are you doing, man? Like, oh, yeah. you're just, you're just showing up now. Well, I've hunted here for the last five years. Yo, awesome. G good for you. But, but you rolled in on at first light. Everybody around you has been here for an hour. Just because you've hunted here doesn't give you the right to roll in whenever you want and set up on top of someone. Jesus, me and Mark went out the, the weekend and and like we seriously put some time into our, our time estimate and we're like, well, you know, legal time is this time. We get up, we got to make our coffee, make our tea, we got to get out in the truck, we got to load up the boat and, you know, we do up our time estimate to get there. And give ourselves time to grass in the blind and, and a few 10 minute buffer. And we're sitting there, we're all done, we're good. And we're like, ah, oh, we're good. Now we can just wait and listen for the birds. Brrr, boat burns past us. And we're like, what the fuck? Like, seriously, fellas, you're just coming out now. Like, three boats. <laughs> yeah, 10 minutes before legal. And you're just rolling in now. And, and, <laughs> So anyways, yeah, anyways, I won't get in, in into the conversations too, too much, but. Uh, I had it happen last week, actually. I was, my truck was parked and it was literally 
five minutes to shooting time and I saw the lights coming down the line fence. And I was like, no way. <laughs> Body rolled her right down the terrace in the field, turned the lights out, light bar. Flipped it on. <laughs> and then, he had like, I don't know, he must have had like a dozen Bigfoot decoys, started chucking them. Stuff was just flying everywhere. I, and I, no, I stood there again my mouth hanging open a little drool coming out probably going holy fuck like this guy is poor. so anyway i walked down and i had my headlamp off and i got just about to him and then i turned it on and just stopped he's like oh what i didn't see you there and he, he's like are you hunting here i was like well I'm going to tell you, I'm not just out for a walk. Yeah. Really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Six I o'clock said, in the morning, out in the middle I of the fucking we've cornfield. Been for, we've been here for a few hours. We're all set up. Anyway. And uh, I, yeah, I've seen all kinds. Well, there, you know, that, it's a pretty big field. Maybe I could set up on the other end and we'd just bounce them back and forth. Hmm. And I, I, Little sky bust. Yeah. I was like, I don't know. That's gonna work, but sorry. <laughs> yeah, I don't think. Yeah, that's that's probably not a good idea. I wish I, I, I wish I could get up at, at uh, ten minutes before shooting light and throw a bunch of stuff. Out. Yeah, we don't no. have it as bad as duck as uh, deer hunters. I'm pretty sure every time I've been out deer hunting, I've had people trespassing. Really? Oh, well, it's bad up here. Really? Yeah. The, I don't, uh, two years ago, my dad and I were set up. I have him at like the other side of the field and I'm at the one side and I'm sitting there and I see a guy roll up and he walked, he was walking right along the line and he gets right to my, right to my tree stand. And I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? And he looked up scared as shit. And I said, get the fuck out of here. He left about half an hour later. He showed back up with his two teenage kids and they were going to try and fight me to kick me off the property. I was like, what in the fuck? Like, so dad heard the commotion and he saw us and he came back out. But like, I've said some choice stuff that because of this episode, I won't say. But yeah, up here, Already trespass is bad. Oh, it's people are killed for sure. Yeah. yeah. Question you got to go all Mr. Furley on them, man, when they do that stuff. I just said, like, Dave probably doesn't fight. know who Mr. Furley is. No, though. I'm a bit young for that. But <laughs> no. <laughs> There's a group yeah. chat, guys, so people don't know, but we're Yeah, Phil, go go, go nuts, Phil. Yeah. You're okay, Time's Phil. Up. You're good. Phil it's eight wins. o'clock. Phil wins tonight. You're good, okay. buddy. He's not even gonna talk. I'm still winning. <laughs> He's not, you know what? We can count on one hand how many words Phil said tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Golden drop the F ball. Ah, you're a beaut, buddy. I would only say three words. There would be an F in there. Yeah. Yeah. Philly, uh, in, in all seriousness now, and, and feel free to drop an F-bomb if you, if you need to, but have you been to work all week? Have you been out hunting at all this week? Uh, no. My, like, I work straight afternoons. I'm week on, week off, and then today I did a little, little, little extra something, something. A little something, something. Barbecue that I need. But yeah, it's been, uh, like, when I work, it, that's it. I can't, I can't get out. Um, right. I had flooded timber lined up for tomorrow oh. day off flooded timber and my little guy is home sick from school oh no i'd love to hunt flooded Daddy timber needs daycare tomorrow do do what the old old people used to do give him a few shots of rum put him to sleep mm-hmm. yeah There's that's a- frowned upon these days uh, apparently, this is why apparently. Mark is the only person. This is why Mark is the only person here who doesn't have kids. Yeah, what was it I said the other day? Oh, so Mark was down, uh, and I'm still waiting for my truck. Right, so we had to tow the boat. So we had to tow my boat with Mark's truck, and Mark's just got the extended cab. He doesn't have the crew cab. So my son is coming with us, and uh, I said, "Yeah, hop in the back." And he was like, "Why is it so small back here?" I was like, "You know why?" 
I said, because Merck doesn't have any life sucking fucking kids and he doesn't need a crew cab truck. He can get away with just this, with just a, a, a single cab truck. That's why, Cade. That's why. And he was like, there's my. That saved him 20. <laughs> Yeah. Meanwhile, my eleven-year-old kids in the back going, "Dad loves me. Dad loves me." Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. Parent of the year. <laughs> <laughs> like no, like sucking kids. That's why Merck only has his extended cab truck. But no, the price I, and, was great. That's why. It's but in all honesty, um, my young fella this morning, as uh, I was getting ready to take him to school, he was like, uh, "And Dave's bringing me up a set of waiters tomorrow." Um, for them geese are still piling in back there wow. um yeah i can set there's another crew just flying over right now which is super super late like it's it's eight o'clock here right now that's two hours that's two hours of birds piling into that uh into that roost back there oh you got more than 500 back there well they're only coming in in groups of like five seven you know what i mean like there was a couple big crews of uh, couple big flocks that came in but for the most part it's just five ten birds just constantly and they're just coming from they all different right and new from like all those companies yeah big companies, companies. Of birds. big companies of birds i used to say any that all the time guys, any guys i got from newfoundland always say oh look at the company there boys look at the company coming <laughs> i used to say that all the time and people used to laugh at me and i'm like oh well i guess i won't fucking say that no more that's right, you <laughs> I used to always say a company of birds because it was like a and and the way I always explained it, it was like a, a company of soldiers, right? Like it's a large number yeah. of a uh, large number, and and I was like, and people were like company, it's a flock of birds. I was like, shut up, mainlanders, <laughs> upper Canadian, <laughs> upper Canadians. Yeah. Are they in there in the middle of the day or are they loafing their 2D or what? Yeah, so they'll they'll usually leave um, around about 8, um, back around 10, 30, 11, even though me and Merck tried to hunt them uh, around that time last week and a nun came back. But this to today, they were back in there dropping in around 10, 30. This evening, the first big crew was, was copped up and, and spilling air at 6 o'clock like almost on the dot six o'clock. So I'm, I'm thinking that we must've got some new birds in um, over the last couple of days, but the weather, the weather wouldn't suggest that we've got new birds, if that makes sense. It's going to be warm on Saturday and then the temperature's dropping here. Yeah. So that'll, that'll push down it's your way. I'm sure. I, I'm, I am hearing that there's still uh, there's still teal in the area, which is mind boggling. We got teal last on the weekend. And, we and yeah, and you're for you're more north than I am. I don't know. Yeah. Zero ducks this year. Really? Yeah. Just been geese. We had a we had a pretty good goose hunt on the weekend, eh, Mark? That was uh that was an awesome goose hunt, man. Six Everything man. about that hunt was awesome. Six man limit about I don't know. Sixty well, plus sixty to about an hour and a half. Yeah. A little over and, an hour because in the uh, middle of the, the day. middle you guys went for donuts. Mm. And uh, so my know, we decided to stop shooting so you guys can go back and shoot some birds. Yeah. <laughs> my wife got a new pampered chef uh, oven thing. It's got like an air fryer oven dehydrator, right? And this is the first time I've had a dehydrator. So I was like, fuck, I'm going to make goose jerky. Mm -hmm. This is like two weeks ago. And um, Kazara got one at the same time. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, man, look at the recipe for jerky. I'm going to try that this weekend when I shoot a goose. For the last couple weekends, anytime we've seen geese overhead, I stopped calling the docks and I've been trying to get a goose to come in. And I haven't got one since we got that damn air fryer. Really, eh? So I'm pretty sure that's the reason is because of the air fryer. Well, I made one on Kyler's air fryer the other night, and they were pretty good. So oh, got, yeah. You got that as a plan B, at least. Because my wife's got one now, too. The Pampered Chef one? That thing is awesome. We did You're not going to shoot tonight. any geese either? No. Yeah. It's an I, can't be, I can't believe that is. we're on this fucking show talking about air fryers. Pampered Chef. Man, it's part of it's cooking, cooking your geese, man. 
it is worth it. I've never seen a the wife got this. I'm like, these things are like three, four hundred bucks. I was like, what in the shit is this? And then she starts cooking meals in, and I'm like, yeah, you can get another one if you want. Like, this thing is good. <laughs> you can get, you can get yeah. it. Yeah. I give it you permission. Cook, yeah, it doesn't cook a lot at the same time, but man, it cooks good. Fellas, I'm going to uh, I'm going to shut off the recording here because we're just rambling on now, and and I'm sure the millions and millions of fans. Um, are probably like these guys are fucking idiots and uh, <laughs> I got I got to turn this off right now so um Maddie thanks again buddy for coming on you, you've been awesome uh, you've always stayed in touch with us and uh, when I asked you if you could come on tonight you were as long as uh, as long as you weren't in the field you were you were in for it so I really appreciate it buddy and I can't thank you enough for for coming on yeah, thank you very much for, for having me. I really appreciate it, boys. My pleasure, for sure, anytime. And, uh, yeah, we'll get you on. We, we, you, we just got to have more more laughs, man. And uh, and that's that's ultimately what it was. And and you know what? We'll, we'll not put the reins on Phil next time, and, and we'll have a little bit more fun. What do I win? You don't win fuck all, Phil. You don't yeah, win fuck can- all. You can swear next episode. That's yeah. Really so yeah. we'll go around the table. We'll start with Brian. Uh, any last words, buddy? Uh, yeah, Maddie. Thanks for coming in. Uh, always good to chat with you. And uh, hope you're you finish up your your guiding season strong there. And uh, I'm sure we'll be chatting uh, in the future, especially when you guys run out of birds. Come, don't be afraid to uh, come out this way, and we'll put something together. Yeah, yeah, I will for sure. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Mark, good seeing you again, Maddie. Good chat. Good hearing from you. Uh, good job, Phil. Well done. Didn't think it was possible, but here we are. <laughs> Billy, Matt, great as always. Love the luscious locks, buddy. Keep it going. <laughs> the sick flow. <laughs> that, that is. Hey, I wanted to ask you, Maddie, do you put a fucking hair straightener on that or what? Or is that all natural? Sometimes I do, yeah. My woman does it for me. Attaboy. She looks after my my woman. Most times I just let the wind do its thing. I just stand into the wind and let her go. <laughs> like Fabio. <laughs> Wherever it ends. Can't believe it's not butter. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> Some days, I get, some days I get an elastic and I tie it up. That's my. That's going to be the new trend. Believe you me. You watch. Oh, yeah, you should do a man yeah. bun. I did. I had one on Saturday. Yeah, because we wouldn't make fun of you at all if you done that. I'll send you. Pictures. I don't know what's longer, <laughs> your your hair or Jeff Code's beard. It's kind of it's a close tie though. Ooh. Yeah, we should measure those up. Yeah, we that's should. a good. It's a good beard. We really should, yeah. He's got yeah. a good beer. He does. Hey, you know what we should do? And we should, we'll talk about it right here. But next year, let's hope that the border is open. And when Jeff Coates comes across to do his annual hunt to PEI, we should uh, we should meet up. And, and so Jeff Coates, Matty Wilson, and us hang out in, uh, in New Brunswick for a little bit and, and shoot some birds in the face. That'd be pretty fun. Yeah, absolutely. That'd, that'd, be, awesome. be, that'd be a lot of fun, fellas. Dave. Patty, thanks for coming on again. It's uh, I enjoy your Instagram stories and those videos that you send. I don't even know if you know it's me you're sending them to, but I enjoy them <laughs> nonetheless. <laughs> <laughs> Philly, fuck, congratulations, buddy. I fucking tried to fucking say the fucking word for you as much as I fucking could. But... <laughs> You're welcome, fucker. <laughs> fucker. <laughs> Can't swear uh, if you're not talking. Yeah, yeah exactly. Matty, you got anything you wanted to anything you wanted to end with, buddy? No, just uh I hope everybody's having a good season. I just appreciate you guys thinking of me and, and having me on here. It's always good to talk to you. And uh we covered some good topics here. The you know, it's it's all, whether we're talking about hunting or whatever all we talked about here's all it's all good but uh i thought uh when we started into uh the stuff about photography mm-hmm. that because that, that's uh you know that portrays who we are as hunters and and uh one thing that we we 
didn't get into that we could get into another time is uh, as far as pictures and how you display the game, um, African hunts, all those critters are always pristine, right? They always take the time and make them look proper. So, yeah, yeah. Mark, Mark think, actually I, brought that up about two weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it makes uh, and Maddie knew that he heard it on when he was listening to the episode. <laughs> <laughs> he's just he's just reiterating what we yeah. said. Testing us, that's what yeah. he's doing. He's yeah. testing us yeah. <laughs> from you, yeah, uh, yeah, but I. I think it's a good challenge for people to just show, you know, show more of the hunt. Yeah. I try to do like, like, you know, if you watch my Instagram story, some days it's just us being absolutely ridiculous. Could be cooking bacon in the middle of the night in the trailer. Could be, could be anything, but you can always tell that we're having fun and we try to show all of the hunt. So yeah, good challenge for people. Take pictures, take lots of them, post different stuff. Thanks for having me, boys. I appreciate you. No, thank you. And and an awesome note to, to end the show on is um, there's there's so much more to the hunt than just those piles of birds. Um, it is a journey, and and it is something that you start, you know, easy easy twenty four hours before you actually head out into the blind. When you start thinking about exactly what you're doing, you're looking at the weather, trying to figure out what's going to happen with the wind with the precipitation, where you're gonna set up, what time you're gonna wake up, how you're gonna to get to the blind, all of that stuff is all part of the hunt. And, and Maddie, I, I wanna thank you, buddy, because it's, uh, it's something that I never really thought too much about taking pictures of, but uh, something that I, I definitely will start taking more pictures of and, and not just the piles. Um, so once again, thank you so much for coming on and hanging out with with us um everybody that that's listening i'm i'm sure you've you've all figured it out by now but anybody that this is the first time you you've listened to us we are 100 as advertised a bunch of friends that love hanging out together albeit we're scattered all across the country we love talking hunting we love ragging on phil and we just want to have a good time Please share the fact that uh, the Union 0430 is out there, who we are, what we're doing, what we're all about. And please feel free to message us anything you want to talk about, any, any topics, feel free, hit us a message and, uh, and we'll give you a shout out on the show. With that, Maddie, thanks once again, buddy. I love it. Can't wait to have you on once again with some of that East Coast charm. And um, until next week, everybody, big love, be safe, enjoy one another. Phil, you done good, buddy. <laughs>